Hey there, everybody. We are in uh, Sebring, Ohio. I just delivered. Five-star delivery. And now we're uh, off to Coronopolis, Coronopolis, Pennsylvania. I'm probably going to be there for tomorrow morning. I should give them a call right now before I leave. They want 12 boxes. And it's all on the floor. Like I was telling you yesterday, it's all heavy boxes on the floor. I've got to tailgate it to the back which means I've got to carry it to the back of the truck where they carry it to wherever they want it. They signed me a little signature, give me a high five, and I'm on my way. Maybe not a high five, we're not supposed to do that now. The sickness. It's everywhere. It's listening. Okay, so I got my papers there. I'm gonna have to uh, punch in my address here. I'll let Karen know. Hopefully she knows where we're going. She knows everything apparently, she's the Karen. Knows all the rules. Uh, okay. Let's try this out. Do you know where we're going, Karen? I'm just punching it in. Uh, da, 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 da. Usually, US addresses she's pretty good with. What's going on here? Why did my volume all of a sudden turn off? I don't know what's going on. Good morning, though. We're starting a new day. Uh, Let's see what happens. Another five-star delivery by Trucker Josh. That's me. Let's see where we're going next. What's, what's next in here? It's like a goodie bag of deliveries. It's a goodie bag of deliveries. We're going to, oh, oh, Troy, Virginia, which is 540 kilometers away. So five and a half hours of driving. How many miles would that be? 300 miles away, something like that. Troy, Virginia. I know a Troy, he lives in Washington. That's not the same Troy. Troy, Virginia. Virginia is for lovers. Did you know that? That's their state slogan, if you're not from North America. Virginia is for lovers, that's what they're known for. We should take a second honeymoon, my wife and I. We should take a second honeymoon to Virginia. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Virginia is for lovers. We actually have friends in Virginia, Moses and Colleen. They, they live in uh, Southern Virginia somewhere, uh, closer down to North Carolina, I think, but we want to go visit them sometime. I, I've been saying that for years now. Still the same, we still want to go visit them. And we want to visit Troy on the West Coast. We want to do so much. It's just, we have these little uh, plastic rectangles. We don't have enough of them. I'm trying to collect as many as I can everywhere I can find them, but these plastic rectangles are sometimes hard to come by. So as soon as I get enough plastic rectangles, then we can go. In the US, they use paper rectangles. In Canada, we use plastic rectangles. Everybody's chasing them. There's never enough. I guess I gotta put that new address in. I'm in no rush, because we're not delivering that next one until tomorrow now. Got all evening to get there. Maybe I'll have a shower on the way somewhere. I got really lucky at this place here. I arrived here after hours. I figured, meh. You know what? I couldn't get a hold of them because they were closed. They knew I was coming tonight or in the morning. They said either one's okay. If I get here before they close, good. If not, so they closed at 5 and it was like 5.30. I was like, man, let's go see if they're still there. Let's just take our chance. I called them. No one picked up. I was like, ah, oh, they're probably closed. Let's go try the door. Right? So we, I get here and there's one person still here. And they accepted the delivery quite happily. So imagine if I would have just not even tried, just gone to a truck stop somewhere to come back in the morning. I would have been five and a half hours behind because now today I'm going to drive that five and a half hours to Troy, Virginia. I would have had to do that tomorrow. I would have really pushed back this load. Now when I'm done this load, all these 10 deliveries, I'm going to get my reload five and a half hours sooner, which means I can get half a day further down the road, which means more plastic rectangles. That's not a rectangle. Rectangles. Not everyone uses those plastic rectangles. Uh, Canada especially is turning very much into a cashless society. I, I never, ever have cash on me. Never. I always just have my cards, right? It's much better because if you get robbed, well, they're not gonna get anything from you because there's nothing there. As soon as they steal your wallet, you're like, okay, here's my wallet. And then you just make a phone call and be like, hey, can you cancel everything in my wallet? It got stolen. They're like, okay, bloop, everything's locked. They got no money. So, most places in Canada actually prefer to have uh, tap debit cards right now. All you gotta do is tap it. I don't like that part. It's a little easy to, a little too easy. 
that's why I have all of my cards in this little, uh, looks like a little child's cash, cash box, right? But what it is, is it's actually where I keep all my cards. You can't see them, it's a secret. But I'll show you the side here. Uh, on the side, it's aluminum or whatever. That blocks people from bumping up against you with their little theft devices that steal your money by tapping all your cards at once. So, that's how I carry cash around. So yeah, the US still uses their uh, paper rectangles and uh, they only have one color. They're all green. Some of them have a little bit of gold in it. Like here, I'll, I'll show you one second. Bear with me. I don't think I have any Canadian rectangles with me, but I, I do have an American one here. Oh, oh, okay, so here, here's an American rectangle. This is a big one. One big one. They're all pretty much this color. This one's got writing on it. Isn't it illegal to write on American money? I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I got it like that. But uh, Canadian money is all color coded. The $5 bill is uh, blue. The $10 bill is purple. The $20 bill is green. The $50 bill is red. The $100 bill is brown. And the million dollar bill, I'll never know. I'll never know what color that is. Because I'll never see one. And the internet lies. You know what, let's actually, Let's look it up on Google right now. What does a Canadian $1 million bill look like? Let's ask her. Hey Google. Speak to me. How are you doing? Hey Google. Why don't you want to talk to me? What does a $1 million Canadian bill look like? Is there a $1 million Canadian bill? Okay, currently the highest denomination. Okay, so the $100 bill is the highest denomination circulating Canadian note. Okay, so you would need $10,100 bills, it says, to have $1 million. 10,000, can you imagine? $100 bills, 10,000. I wouldn't mind just having like, I don't know, hundred is that asking too much I take one I would I'd even just take one but nowadays you can't really do much with just a hundred bucks eh? that's like not even half my phone bill <laughs> what's this oh here's one. Oh, we used to have a thousand dollar bill it's got the Queen on it this is from what year is this okay Canada, $1,000 bill, 1988. This was a Canadian $1,000 bill back in 1988. Can you see it? I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Maybe I'll send it through to my uh, email and then post it there. Well, see, yeah, yeah, you probably saw it. You don't care, you don't care, no one cares. We're never gonna see those things anyways. But we don't have $1 bills in Canada. I wish we did. I like the $1 bill idea better like the US does that, like these $1 bills, because I hate having all this change all the time. In Canada, we have a $1 coin. It's a gold coin with a queen on the front and a loon on the back. We call it a loony because there's a loon on it. Aren't we clever, right? Go Canada. And here's the weird thing. We also have a $2 coin. It's silver on the outside and it's got a gold center. It's got the queen on the front and a polar bear on the back. We call it a toonie. If you're ever thinking of asking for advice, for clever names, for coins and things in the future, don't ask us. I'm honestly not even joking. Our $2 coin is called a toonie because it's two loonies. <laughs> oh, Canada, with our national beaver, and our loonies and toonies. No wonder the world doesn't take us serious. Hey, I put you in gear. Go, oh, I gotta, I gotta punch into Karen here where I'm going. One second. Karen! Karen, I gotta talk to you. Karen? 
You got a moment? I hope she's not angry. She's always in a bad mood. Every Karen's always in a bad mood. We're going to... Troy, Virginia. Okay, let's punch this in here. Punch the address in. The US, the US addresses are always in the GPS for the most part. In Canada, not always, especially in Quebec, because Quebec is Quebec. They, uh, they think they're better than everyone else and they don't want to join any clubs with anybody. They're their own thing. So they don't always cooperate with all the GPS that the Americans or that the English Canadians come up with. I think that's my own conspiracy because the GPS has never worked right in Quebec. They never work right. Let's see. 566 kilometers according to uh, Karen here. All right. Same difference, whatever about. Because Karen Proceed takes, quiet route. Karen, no one cares. So, uh, <laughs> I don't always talk down to women like that. I just want that disclaimer. Only Karens, all right. Forget what I was talking about. Let's get on the road. in some little town of West Virginia. It's the bumpy Virginia. Lots of hills here. And tiny little old towns that were built when horse and buggies were around because this, look at these houses are practically on the street. Imagine sleeping, like what if a car just drives into your living room? I love these small towns. Love it. I don't think those lights are the original lights, though. Oh, that's got a big building here. Oh, Christmas lights. Oh, that makes me want Christmas time. Is it almost Christmas yet? What's that? Wow. Green means go. Nice little town here. So, uh... I'm not too sure how far we're gonna get tonight yet. I'm already thinking we're probably not gonna find any parking. Or it's gonna be tough finding parking. I got, got another like 300 clicks to go. So that's what, 175 miles or so, somewhere in there, 200 miles. And I don't wanna drive to the middle of the night because I'm definitely not gonna find any parking then. I'm not gonna stay in a small, well, I wouldn't mind staying in a small town like this. I just don't think they have any truck parking for me here. Well, people are parked out here on the highway already, so I'm guessing the rest area is full, but we're gonna go in and try our luck. People that parked out here didn't even go into the rest area, so they don't even know if there's open spots. They just didn't want to take the risk. Me, I don't want to take the risk of parking on the road like that. Let's see. Oh, it's one of these rest areas. Shoot. 
this is where uh, there's not as much parking available because, well, they make us park, like parallel park like this. And you can only fit like 10 trucks in here. And if you build the rest area properly, like every other state, you could fit probably, I don't know, up to 50 in the same space. But alas, here we are. That guy took up two spots. Thanks, TMC. Glad you got two spaces. Hope you enjoy being able to stretch out. What was this? One space in front of this guy, maybe? On the right? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Nope. Nope. See, why do they build a restaurant with parking like that? You can fit 10 trucks. When there's like tens of thousands driving down this highway every day, right? <laughs> All right, off to the next tiny little rest area. Let's see what we can find down the road. Oh, Prime. One of the very few I can actually pass because you're limited lower than me. Coming up to the next rest area. Truck's parked on the shoulder here again. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that. That's a death wish, man. Someone's gonna nail you. Someone's gonna... You're gonna get smoked. See, there's a space right here, but I'm not parking on the highway like that. Are you kidding me? There's no parking signs there for a reason. You're gonna get kashmucked. I don't wanna park strictly enforced, no parking. <laughs> really? How strict do you mean? Okay, which, which way, which way? What does this sign say? Trucks this way? Yes, trucks this way, okay. Guess I could have parked Continue right there. Continue along this road for 17 kilometers. This one looks like a bigger rest area. I've got a, I've got a better feeling about this rest area. See, this is a normal rest area with actual more parking. You'll see as we come around the corner here. See? There we go. Still looks pretty full though. At least they can fit more trucks in here now, though. I don't like how these guys park at the back, because then it's harder to get into these spots, but what can you do, right? You gotta, gotta do what you gotta do. And it's awful. I should have taken that spot there that I saw. I wonder if I could park at the back here. Probably not. Probably not. No, I'm not gonna park there. Okay, well, another one full. Fantastic, fantastic. I guess we'll keep on going. I got another hour and 16 minutes available to me. If you can see, coming into rest area number three. We're on I-64 now, eastbound, going towards Troy, Virginia. We're still about a half hour away. Hoping there will be space here. Which direction am I supposed to go? This way? Yeah, this way, right? All these guys parked along here. I don't know if there's gonna be room. Ugh, these rest areas are always, always full. So frustrating, you can never Continue find work. this road for 39 kilometers. You know, we can't all get up at the crack of dawn to start work. Sometimes, you know, we gotta start late and end late. This guy's just sleeping right here. Oh, Continue boy. on this road for 39 kilometers. Come on, just one spot. One spot! If I can't find one here, it's, I'm gonna have to figure out what to do next. No, that one's taken too tanker in there. Well, I'm out of options. Oh, frustrating. How can they, they've got to know that they have a parking problem, a lack of parking problem seem to do anything about it.
literally nowhere else I can go. I still have 46 minutes left on my clock. There's a rest area on the other side of the road. I can always do a U-turn and go back and check that one out. No bueno. Not good for me. Couldn't find any parking anywhere. I went to the next rest area, turned around, came to the rest area going the other direction. No parking there either. Came back around and parked on uh, well, the side of the rest area here where I'm out of the way. And there's no signs anywhere saying no parking, so that's good. I think we're good. They really gotta do something about this parking situation. It's ridiculous. East of the Mississippi is just ridiculous to find parking. But it is what it is. We're here, we're safe. Uh, I'm going to bed. Wake up in the morning and let's do it all over again. I'll see you then.